Hello and welcome to Virtual Herp Day Live! We are coming to you today from the Bamberger Ranch Preserve. My name is Jared Holmes. I am the Director of Education and Zoologist at the Bamberger Ranch Preserve. And today I have with me my pal and confidant, Dalton Newharth. Dalton? Yeah? You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I met Jared when I was at a and m and uh, you know, he was a little bit older than me. But uh, you know, so I, I learned a lot about herping and stuff from him. Um, which maybe doesn't say a whole lot, but um, anyway, so yeah, so right now I'm working on my master's at Texas State, I'm studying lizards and their responses to wildfire uh, in the forest in Bastrop, um, and yeah, that's uh, not much else to say about me. <laughs> that's all right. This is actually Dalton's second Herp Day. So let me give you a little background on, on Herp Day. Uh, this started technically started seven years ago when our ranch manager's son wanted to go out herping. Uh, so I took him on a Saturday and we flipped rocks all day. Our hands were raw, we were sunburnt, it was fantastic. So I said, well, if I can teach a, a 10 year old and keep his attention all day, maybe I can do this for 25 10 year olds. And we did. So this would be year six of having kids out uh, to, to herp, right? But unfortunately, uh, the last two years because of the COVID situation, we've had to cancel the in-person. But Dalton and I, we are in the same pod. Um, and because of that, he's gonna come out and help me. And we've got Joel from the Science Mill out here running the camera for us and running the board. If you have any comments, maybe it'll come through. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But basically today, I wanna teach all of you how to safely do what we love to do so much, and that's herp. Um, the hill country is a lot different than um, some of the other spots in Texas, obviously. Uh, when you get out to West Texas, road cruising um, or driving very slowly on blacktop and dirt roads looking for reptiles and amphibians is the easiest way of going. <laughs> but with the hill country, with the topography and the geology and just the weather, your March, April time frame, you are golden flipping rocks. And we are going to flip rocks all stinking day. Now there's some techniques that we'll talk about when we get to that stage. Um, but one of the, the things you need to keep in mind is the first step to herping is knowing what you might find. And for that, you need to study field guides. This is a really good field guide here. This is the uh, Dixon and Hibbets book. Um, and Dr. Toby, or Tony Hibbets as he's known in some circles, uh, is actually our mentor from Texas A&M. He was there even 20 years ago when I was there. Uh, and this book is great. It contains amazing pictures, but it has a county map on it. And we're in Blanco County today. So Blanco County, if you know where that is, you can, I mean, not that we're gonna be able to see it on camera now, maybe, okay? So Blanco County is this little weird triangle thing here. And you'll notice that for this species, there's no dot there. So I know that uh, it's very unlikely that I'm gonna find a banded ge gecko. But if I do, well now my lizard brain's gonna tell me that's weird and I should report that because that could be a natural history note. It could be a uh, distribution, a range extension. So science really wants to know about that stuff. So it all starts with those field guides. There's a plenty of them out there. There's field guides specific to snakes, turtles, crocodiles. Fun fact, we will not be finding any alligators well, or exciting. crocodiles today or sea turtles. If we did, it'd be a county record. If we did, it'd be a county record. See, look, he's already thinking like a scientist. And that's what today is all about, folks. So normally we have a couple rules. The first rule is you have to have fun. The second rule, nobody gets in the way of me having fun. And that includes you. Okay. Right? Don't get in the way of Jared having fun. But really, it does come down to safety as well. Because we are in Texas, because we are in the hill country, we have um, four different species of venomous snake. So it's very unlikely that we're going to find a cottonmouth because we have the headwaters to Miller Creek, which flows into the Pedernales. Um, but we have found exactly one. In the 10 years that I have been um, herping the Bamberger Ranch, I've only found one and that was after the Memorial Day flood of 2015, um, when Miller Creek really became a flowing river for uh, about 18 months. And so one just happened to show up, and that's the only one I've ever seen, okay? So maybe we'll find another one? Maybe. Highly unlikely though. But we do have things like coral snakes, copperheads, and... Rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes. 
And if we come across one of these venomous snakes, we do have special tools for that, okay? And so because this day is normally geared towards kids, we do have another rule it's called safety, right? And we want to make sure that everybody is safe and we have tools to deal with that. So we've got these things called tongs. And these tongs come in many shapes and sizes. And this allows you to safely lift, keep a distance from the venomous snake, okay? Grab it, mid-body, move it safely. Um, so that's what, we'll have these with us for safety. Uh, when you get really good, like this is what I use. This is it called a snake hook, right? And you would hook the, the animal with this and move it wherever you need to, again, safety. We're not gonna do stupid things like pin snakes and you know grab it behind the head. There's just no reason to do that, okay? But I also have to show you these these giant forceps. These giant forceps are what you need to work with coral snakes. Coral snakes are really thin bodied. You know, think about it, the thickness of a pencil or maybe my, my pinky would be a really big one. And so the tongs, it can be dangerous to the snake to use tongs because you don't know what kind of damage you could be doing to the ribs and the lungs. So something that's a little more gentle like this is what we're gonna use. But again, if we find a uh, coral snake today, the odds are we're not gonna handle it. We're just going to try to get it as close up with the camera as we can. Um, but it really is, we want to make sure that everybody is safe, right? Now, the day is all about data. Well, after fun. Well, right, after fun. Yeah. And after safety, then data. Then data, okay. Yeah. See, we work long and hard on to like, figure out where all this stuff fits, if right. you can't tell. Data starts right here, right? This notebook. Okay, it contains all of the herp day data from the last six years, way back in here, okay? If you're not keeping data, what are you doing? Outside of having a good time, right? I mean, you ain't doing science. That's right, you're not doing science. And our good friend Sean Graham is a proponent of this. You, you don't go herping for fun, right? Make science fun by herping with a notebook and collect that data, right? So what we're gonna to do today, we're going to three distinct spots. The only spot we're gonna, we can actually go live from is this one right here. We call this area Stonehenge. It would be classified as a um, low slope uh, adobe range site. Okay, so as we go around, you're gonna see a lot of rocks and, and pocketed um, caliche blowouts, okay? So our uh, common grasses here are gonna be your panicum grasses, uh, we're going to have little blue stem kind of strung throughout here, but you're going to, just going to see a lot, a lot of rocks. Okay. Then we're going to go to a riparian um, oak juniper woodland. And then we're going to go to a steep adobe site. So we might be able to come back live from the steep adobe site. You'll have to keep checking back in for that. But we will update you through Facebook and Instagram as to what we're finding. And we're also going to put all of our observations on a... Um, open source app called iNaturalist. And the Seeler Bamberger Ranch Preserve not only has a page, but the Herp Day actually has a project. So you can go back and you can track all of the different stuff we have found um, in the past years through that as well. And it's a, it's a huge bummer to not have kids here today. It's a huge bummer to not have the University of Texas, Dr. Travis LaDuke and his students out here. And, uh, but we are hoping we find lots of stuff and teach you a little bit about this. So as we go throughout the day, when we find things, we're going to do our best to show them to you, give you a little teachable moment. Um, but expect to find a lot of thread snakes or blind snakes, um, a lot of ground snakes, uh, a lot of, what, what are Tantilla called? What's the common Flathead name? snakes. Flat-headed snakes. I'm not very good with common names. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things with science too, right? So I think between the two of us, we can tease all of this stuff out. So, Dalton, I guess I got one question for you. What's that? You ready to herp? I'm ready to herp. Ready to flip some rocks? You ready to herp? All right, Joel's gonna get the camera off the tripod. We're gonna walk over here to the first rock. Now, Dalton's gonna lift the first rock, and I'm gonna walk you through the safety aspect of this. <clears throat> so whenever you come up to a big pile like this, Dalton, which rock are you gonna flip first? Um, I think I'm gonna go for this one right here. All right. So when you flip the rock, right, you see how big these edges are? One thing underneath. Right, you want to use that rock climber's grip, grab that edge, and you'll notice too, he's going to flip it towards him. Okay, if you 
your hands underneath there, there could be scorpions, there could be centipedes, or there could be a rattlesnake. And again, rattlesnakes are pit vipers. So they've got that thermal receptive uh, pit to sense that heat. So this rock is going to act as a shield and he's going to lift it towards him. And ants. Are you sure they're not uncles? Oh. Yes. My jokes are fantastic. Well, you'll notice there's another rock underneath here. Just to be good, diligent scientists, I'm gonna work that. Okay, nothing there. All right. Now, we're gonna flip a lot of rocks that are gonna be just like that, where they're gonna be empty, okay? Kids out here, all the students out here would come in handy. So when we're doing a, uh, this would normally be called a time constraint survey. We would have one hour to hit this entire pasture, but we have 25 people, so that's 25 hours of surveying time. Two of us survey that whole thing. I hope we can get this one area done in less than 25 hours. I think um, we got it. But, so we're gonna keep flipping, and the first one of us that finds a, a snake or lizard or toad will let you know. Scorpion. Take a look at that guy. A bark scorpion. Centroides vitatus. One of the things you always gotta be looking for. One thing I wanna point out too is that whenever you flip a rock and you look under it, and then you, you know, you see what you're looking for. If you don't find, like this one just has ants under it. Um, I try to put it back uh, pretty like slowly and back where I found it. Try to maintain that microhabitat underneath that uh, for anything that either is currently under there, like, you know, other insects and arthropods, or if we do find a snake under there, you don't want to crush it or anything. And you want to try to leave that habitat as intact as possible. That is a great point, Dalton. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, one of the things I really like about Herp Day is when we give that, that spiel, um, I love coming up to a rock that a kid has flipped, of putting it back, that it kind of fools me, and I feel like I have to flip it anyway. Okay? <laughs> so it's always a, always a good time. And we're breaking that moisture plane. So these are called gecko. Right. So it's actually a food that to iNaturalist. So uh, amphibians, unless they absolutely have to. Uh, even though my hands are clean, I don't use deodorant, um, I barely shower, uh, and when I do shower, you know, I have a natural base soap. Making sure that your habitat is safe. Sides on your hands with their permeable skin can really wreak havoc on their system and could cause potential death. So we have to tell all of the kids that, that like, we, you can't wear stuff and you got to make sure your hands are clean for this. We're going to take a, 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 bleached, uh, a bleach wipe and we're going to wipe down our gear. You know, that's going to prevent contamination. Because if we were going to an area that had snake fungal disease, um, we don't want to like potentially spread that here. It's the same thing with the amphibians. With the amphibians, uh, saining our ponds, you know, we want to decontaminate all that because we don't want to have chytrid fungus on the ranch. So everything's back down, safe. Now you'll watch, I'm going to put this down. Everything is where it needs to be. Okay, I'm going to go very, very slowly. I'm gonna make sure I don't crush anything. Now once that rock is down, I can shift it back into place. Look at that, you can't even tell I flipped that rock. I'm good. It's almost like I have practice. Oh yeah. You find something? No. I'm up one nothing. I mean, are you up three nothing? So we've got a little, little centipede. Don't ask me the species. I'm sure there's somebody out there that can tell you. We find the red-headed centipede, though. I won't pick that one up either. Nope. The, the rock surface, you gotta be careful. Right, put that back nice and slow to not crush it. More scorpions. So there's, oh, oh, we got a lizard. Don't go towards the scorpion. There we go. All right, this little thing is a little brown skink, skink, lateralis. These are really common in this undergrowth. They get a little bit bigger than this, not much. Right? You'll notice how I'm handling it very gently, mid-body. Okay. 
One of the things about lizards, they have breakage planes in their tail, and that's an anti-predator behavior. So if I, was a, if I was a bird or a cat and grabbed it by the tail, that tail can fall off, and the ideal is that tail keeps wiggling. It's got a, this autotomic um, reaction, and then the, the cat or the predator would get distracted by that, and the lizard could get away, and then it would grow that back. Okay, well, that's good. If I can get it to focus. There we go. Click. All right. Now you notice what I'm going to do here because I found it underneath this rock. Okay, I'm not going to lift that rock up and put this back. I am just going to put this thing right on the edge and it's going to go where it's going to go. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to step away. And I'm going to keep flipping rocks. Got the sun coming out. It's supposed to be 80 something degrees today. So hopefully it doesn't get too hot. We really enjoy doing this when it's overcast and in the 50s. The first more scorpions. The first herp day we ever did, it started out at 39 degrees. We found our first herp when it was 39, a little lizard, and it wasn't moving very fast. These reptiles, not a scorpion. Reptiles and amphibians rely on, on sources. They're not like us, they're not endothermic, they're called ectothermic. So they can regulate based on the temperature of their surfaces. So that's one of the, the beauties about rocks this time of year. This would be really difficult to do, flip rocks and find stuff in June or July, when it would be already 85 degrees and the sun beats them up. The, the surface of the rock heats up so quickly. That's why you find lizards and you find snakes on top instead of underneath, because that surface underneath can get really, really warm very, very quickly. All right, let's see here. Got a snake over here. Got a snake? Oh yeah. Look at this, this guy's finally herping. <laughs> You know, one thing that uh, friends sometimes like to do when they're herping with their friends is uh, get to the spots before and flip them before everybody else gets there. What species is that, Dalton? That's a good question, Jared. Maybe you want to get out the... Uh, Should I get guide? out my dichotomous key? Yeah, show them how it's done. One of the really nice things about those field guides is when you read them, you learn them. Ah, that is a ground snake. Okay, and that's Sonora. Oh, they just changed the species. It used to be semi-annulata. Is it Taylor I now? That's a good question, Jay. <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's one of the limitations on the field guides is they don't get updated quite as quickly as the nomenclature does. But these ground snakes eat centipedes and eat spiders, you know, um, arthropod eaters. That's a full-grown snake. Mm -hmm. They can get a little bit bigger than that. And they're called variable ground snakes because sometimes they're red, sometimes they're black and white striped. We should find all three of those, uh, we call those morphs um, today. So that's a good start, the first snake. And hopefully we find a lot more. And now, Dalton, oh, you did such a good job with this stuff. I know, thank you. Man. So one of the things too with these rocks, you want to make sure you don't bite off a rock that's too big because you might not be able to safely got to readjust here you might not be able to safely lift it or safely put it back so for this bigger rock here you know you also got to learn a little physics figure out where your fulcrum is so that you can safely lift it and sometimes you got to do a little teamwork too is that a cry for help, Jared? No, I can get it. So, one of the really nice things about doing this in the hill country, more gastrofrines. So now I'm gonna ask for help, and I'm gonna get Dalton to move those toads, because this rock is fairly heavy. Sure enough. Let me just grab a stick and move them, or? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I'm just gonna kinda coax them. Like I said, I'm gonna try to avoid any sort of contamination with these amphibians. Don't forget to snap that photo for INAT. Oh, yeah, I guess I'll do that first. It's all about science. 
And I can do this all day. You know, I do a lot of dead row, deadlifts, a lot of rows, a lot of pull-ups. If you're gonna be a field scientist, you gotta be in pretty good shape. You like that, Joel? Sometimes. All right, so I got one of them. All right, you should be good. All right. I went through the other side. All right. So I'm gonna slowly lower that down. Yeah, there you go. All right. That's it. Right. Now. Yeah. Finagle that. Yep. Just gonna move this. There we go. Perfect. Back down just the way we should. I'll move that rock back where it was. Okay. You know, and you can't always get it perfect, but you just try your best. That's what it's all about. Always be herping. Always do your best. Try to protect the habitat. Now, Dalton, I might need your help on this one. We're gonna flip it. All right. Now, if Dalton wasn't here. I would not attempt this rock. Huh, I don't know how we're going to do this. We might not. This one may not. Uh... This one. You know, it also helps to have a friend like our ranch manager, Stephen Fulton, who's 6'8". You know, he's got a little bit more lift than, than I do. Extra medium Jared doesn't quite work. Now I'm going to check the edge. Okay, there's a little edge here that's safe. Uh, all right, I'm gonna walk away from that one. I don't need a herniated disc. We'll go on to the, are we done through this little yeah. pile? All right, so this area has a lot of little sections just like this. And so we are going to essentially make a big circle around this pasture. And as we walk, we didn't get that one. No, oh, we man. could try that one. Ooh, sorry folks. You know, when you do this stuff live, Another thing you want to be aware of when you're flipping rocks, not just the stuff underneath, but you can also get cactus and you can get nettle on the sides too. So you get a lot of, lots of stings on your hands. So if you just, you know, yeah, see if we can't. One. Gas refining. Another narrow mouth toad. Just. Yeah, he just went into his burrow. Yeah, sticking his butt right. out. You want to get your phone? I'll hold the rock. Okay. You got the rock? I got the rock, yes, All sir. Right. So you see that communication? Holes get harmed. You also don't want to break the rock. Obviously, it's good habitat if you've got a herp underneath there. Right. And there's some field crickets, some other things, some snails under here, too. Yeah. All right, so that thing's in its burrow. We're going to go. Just like that. So I do have one... Um, Thing that I like to tell people when we're flipping rocks, a lot of people get frustrated. You know, I don't know what do we flip here? 60 rocks. We found something like that. One snake, one lizard, and half a dozen frogs. Okay, a lot of people will get discouraged by that. But you don't find stuff unless you flip rocks. There's a lot of rocks out here, so you got to flip a lot of stuff. And we have not got skunked. See, we already found stuff, so we're off to a good start. Yeah, put that back. All right. Got all this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Even little rocks like this. You see, you saw how big that um, ground snake was. You just never know. And this is again, oh, it's a bunch of ants. Oh, are they uncles? Be here all day, folks. That's one of his three jokes. It's true. Dalton, do you know why leopards aren't very good at hide and seek? Is it because they've already been spotted? It's true, because they're always spotted. Uh, okay. Again, I'll be here all day. All right. So now, you see the way these rocks are set up, rock on rock, okay? We're gonna have to work systematically to get to those lower rocks, right? But we're gonna start on the edges. And one of the things you hear are shed skins the signs of the, the first shed of spring. Just got some arthropods underneath there. Another narrow mouth, oh, and he popped down his hole. Would you get a renna? No, narrow mouth. Another narrow mouth. Right. He, sometimes they get away from you. So this looks like a big tarantula burrow. So he was sitting right here, but then I reached for my phone and he hopped down in there. And I'm just going to leave him down in there. I don't really want to mess with him. No, there's no disturb need him. to. 
you know, this data that we're collecting today is used in our management decisions. Um, so we can evaluate this and, and look at all the stuff that we have found year after year and then go, so that's a, another skink, I don't know where he went. Because I had to hold the rock, I didn't want to, I don't feel him. That one was a little bit bigger. We have three different species we find, at least two of them, we found one of them already. Yeah. All right, how do you want to do this, Dalton? Well, I'm gonna have to pick this one okay. so I can get these. But I think I can, all right, I'll shift it. Yeah, let me just start. All right, you get that last one. Sometimes these work like puzzles. Yeah. Nothing under there. Nothing under that one. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'll hold that one now. Okay, so I grab this one. Grab that one. So a lot of these rocks form these gradients. You know, you, you gotta search all the different levels. In the summertime, I might do this just because there's, there's a lot of uh, heat reflection and moisture storage under these layered rocks. You can set out artificial cover. Oh, hold on, don't move me. Move that back. You can set out artificial cover, old uh, plywood boards. Hardy board works really well because it's concrete. And, uh, you know, that will attract snakes after a couple years. We'll hit, we'll hit that a uh, couple spots where we have that um, and later this afternoon. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody. No one's home. Here we go. Let me help you out here. Got it? Okay, good. All right. Onward and upward. Doesn't sound like a herp to me. No, it's not. You're right. They got scales, though. They do. It's close. And what is a feather but a modified scale? That's exactly what a feather is. You had mentioned that there's two species of rattlesnake here. And yes. I know of a third species, but I don't know if you've ever recorded it on the ranch or if it's been recorded from Blanco County, but the Massasauga rattlesnake. I'm glad you brought that up. So I would, we have not found any Massasaugas. Here's another snake um, on the ranch. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Okay. So here's another ground snake. Right, so you see this one's a little, a little bit bigger. Um, I can look at the tail. So this, the, the cloaca is right here. Cloaca means one hole. One hole to do your excretory stuff and your reproductive stuff. Um, and a lot of these, the males will have a longer tail tip. Okay, so this subcaudal tip, okay, caudal meaning tail, so if you look at that, the vent or the cloaca back this way, so I would say judging by that length, this is a male. Females will typically be really, really stubby there. Storing, they put all of their energy into keeping those eggs inside of them. Here we go, obligatory INAT. So we are up to, is this four snakes? Four now? ground snakes. Four ground snakes. Yeah. Did you get that big, big no, buddy? No, I was waiting. Oh man. All right. A whole lot of nothing. Well, no herbs. No herbs. Sometimes it helps to not just be, you know, a herpetologist or a herper casually. It helps to be an all around naturalist. Cause you know, we've been doing all right. You know, we've actually found quite a bit of stuff already yeah some days you do get skunked and it's nice to like other things yeah. so that you're not upset you know you know appreciate all life you know yeah all animals all plants that's a really good point um too and you know when you start reading these field guides with the natural history notes about the species a lot of them will be characterized bali here the grasses shift to lindheimer muley which means there's clay which means there's moisture right there so i would expect to find different species be garter snakes in that area right over there. So as we keep moving this way, okay, so the speciation should change from where we were here to where we go over there. And it's gonna shift again as we uh, walk up towards uh, the low hill. 
So I think we picked through this area pretty, pretty good. Oh, you just flipped that. Oh yeah. What a good job that I have taught him well. I'll take credit for it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I see a couple rocks down here. So we've got another skink over here. Can you grab it? Well, or at least take a photo. All about that data. All right. So I'm going to gently hold this. See how he's flailing? Well, he was flailing on its tail. So these skinks in particular will uh, break their tail off purposely. Jared was talking about that earlier um, as an escape uh, method for getting away from predators. So you want to be careful when you hold these. A lot of people will hold them by the arm very gently because um, you don't want to hurt them, obviously. But they're neat little dudes. And see how he holds his, his legs back against his body there? It's like what Jared was talking about. They use the serpentine motions. All right, I'm going to snap a picture of him for iNaturalist, and then I'm going to put him back. All right. Just check that little watering hole there. There's water there, but nothing but field crickets. Normal herp day, I'd already be at the next spot. But we got to try to do this as a as a group here. <clears throat> so Jared, you were talking about Massasaugas oh, Massasaugas. earlier. Massasaugas. Before we were interrupted That's by the right. ground snake. Uh, Massasaugas are a small grassland rattlesnake. There is a, a desert species as well. Uh, but the one we would have here would be a grassland snake. But with Overgrazing with um, habitat fragmentation um, since post-Civil War expansion, they've lost habitat like this. Uh, if you go to spots in San Angelo and um, the northern edge of the, of the plateau, you can still find them. But the southern edge, you can't, so we're missing this big pocket. And then they start occurring again as you get down into those South Texas grasslands. As an adult, this rattlesnake would only be 24 inches, 18 inches, really, really cool. They're the OG in terms of evolutionary species of rattlesnake. They're the first. Oh, here we go, we got some rocks. Scorpions, some arthropods. Bummer. All right. Well, I see more rocks. Now we have no idea if anybody's even watching this. So we're going to keep recording and go as long as we can. Um, I don't, Joel, are, can you see comments or any comments coming in? Nope. All right, so we might not even be live. All right. We just have to know what people want to know. It's true. Oh, I love this rock right here. Here we go. I'm feeling good. Not this one, but the one underneath it. So I'm going to casually lift that one up. So you notice I checked, no copperheads or rattlesnakes there. Oh, yes! Oh, yes. Ah, oh, jack pot. This is a patch nose snake. And this patch nose snake is actually about to shed. So if you see that, that scale on its eye there, how cloudy it is, we would call that in the blue. So it can't see right now. And so I'm really surprised he's not biting the crud out of me. But you'll notice his cloaca is open and he's musking on me. Okay, so my hands are gonna smell like patch nose snake for a couple days and that's okay, right? Does your wife agree? Yes. Okay. 
She, she knows what my day job is. That's fair. So they're called Pachino snakes because they have this flattened rostral scale right at the front of their nose, so where their nose would be. And that's used for burrowing. We're moving through this soft um, soil underneath. This is a common snake. It often gets confused with um, garter snakes. Uh, you'll find them in your gardens a lot. Um, they're a nice diurnal snake. They like it hot. They eat a lot of lizards. That is their main um, food source, is lizards. So semi-fossorial, really great find. Um, this is about the average size that you find them. Every now and again, you'll find honkers, real big ones. Can you hear that La Cucaracha? Mm -hmm. The Golden Cheek Warbler agrees. It's a good find. See? Every now and again, you get that good juju, and you just know where the snakes are going to be. So I'm going to let him go. This is one of the species that um, we always find out here, so it's always nice to get one early in the morning. And he's a little, little cooler. I'm just going to set him down. Move out of the way. We'll see what he wants to do. And then I'm going to move this rock back on top. You see how slow he's moving right now? You know, again, being ectothermic, he's, he's cool. It's really cold underneath that rock. Cold being a relative term, of course. Um, and so he, uh, if he stays out like this, he'll warm up and he'll move. Um, but we're just going to leave him alone, let him do his thing. We're going to flip some more rocks. I can smell the oud de passion on my fingers already. It's a great scent. All right. Now I'm surveying if I can get the ox through this bush. I might be able to get this one. All right. Move this dead branch out of the way. Oh my God, look at this. See folks, this is why you have to be watching where you are. There's a snake out and about right now. This is a species I love to see. Look at this beauty. Oh yeah, look right? at that. That's awesome. I couldn't have planned that any better. So you see what he's doing right now. This is a ringneck snake, Diadophus punctatus. So you see that color, that warning coloration? Okay, he's telling me stay away. I am dangerous. Look at the way that belly is colored. The, the, I love them. Uh, in, in Pennsylvania growing up, uh, I used to find these all the time. You could find literally hundreds of these in a day. Here in the hill country, you know, if we find half a dozen today, it'll be a really, really good day. So that's really awesome to see. Look at how beautiful that snake is. Again, eating small. Invertebrates, small vertebrates, it'll eat lizards like those um, uh, little brown skinks that we saw. And they have this weird salivatory venom too. Their uh, teeth are channeled and grooved. And so this will flow down there. Uh, our, our intern last year, shout out to Simone, um, actually started studying the venom of these snakes when she was at Florida State. She's now at Northern Arizona University. And we hope she's tuned in. Okay, Really cool. So I'm just going to set this snake down. It was just crawling. Put it back where it was. Point it the same direction. And we'll just see what happens. And go back to flipping rocks just like that. So Jared. Yes, sir. You mentioned that that rain neck, that bright coloration is a warning. Is it a real warning? Well, or are they, you said a warning that says I'm dangerous. Are they actually dangerous? So they are not actually dangerous to anything that might eat it. So that's a really good point. A lot of these snakes like, want to mimic. So that, that bright coloration in nature is called aposematic coloration. It basically just translates warning. So when you think of species like coral snakes, how they have that bright color, those snakes actually are dangerous. But there's other snakes like milk snakes and king snakes that mimic that, have that same coloration, right? Lizard, okay? All right, Joel, I'm going to try to get back over here, flip this rock before I was pleasantly interrupted by that ringneck snake, and we're going to hope that that gives us some good juju for this rock. Going to fight the plants. Well, it's 
okay. I guess that ringneck snake crawled out from underneath there. All right, let's see if I can get this one. Nope, nope, can't get that one safely. Won't be able to get that one safely. Rather than try to destroy the habitat or mess with this tree too much, we're just gonna walk away when you're trying to find nature and appreciate her. All right. Yeah, that one's too buried. When you start flipping rocks too, you get a kind of feel for what you can and can't flip. You see this shelf right here? Okay, we are not gonna try to destroy this. And I, believe it or not, I know you're looking at me, I'm pretty buff, right? But I can't lift this. Okay, I'm not even gonna try. But you see these ledges, how it's got those openings underneath. Who knows how many snakes are actually back behind there? You know, that's gonna provide a really nice microhabitat to overwinter or even den to escape the predators like hogs and hawks. Okay. All right, Dalton, we're ready to walk over this way. Uh, trust. And, and Dalton, feel free to start finding stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the beauties of uh, herping with your pals. You get to give them guff. And it's a good time. All right. So this big fence thing here, this is called a drift array. Uh, the Bamberger Ranch partners with a lot of different universities um, as part of biodiversity studies. And these drift arrays are a really good uh, way to find, to passively trap um, reptiles, amphibians, small mammals. So there's buckets at the, each opening there, and they have lids on them now, so we don't have accidental catch. But when we open these up, the, the snake or the lizard or the mouse or the frog would fall into the, that pit there, and then we could find it the next morning. But it's a, it's a lot of work. You have to be, really be mindful of what's happening. Um, so we're not gonna, we're gonna flip this rock here. Nothing. Now I gotta get my bearings. It's a lot easier when you're chasing kids because they just seem to find all the good rocks and good spots. So now there's going to be a, a nice rock ledge. There's going to be more um, riparian uh, runs right through the middle here, just on the other side of this clearing. When you're walking through a grassland like this, though, you always want to um, be mindful that there could be rattlesnakes out in the tall grass like this. There could be. You want to just have your eyes open. And you notice how we're not walking next to each other is a little bit distance so if there is a coach whip or there is a collared lizard that's out and about you know we could see it it's right. pretty there. buried I think you can get it maybe and you'll know real quick won't you yeah I think you can get it <laughs> lift ah! Nothing. Oh man. I, sh I bet I would have found 15 snakes if I lifted it. Yeah. They know who lives here. So that's right. They're, that's why they're literally just coming out in front of you. You have to have the touch too. You know, our mentor, uh, Toby, he just seems to just walk and find stuff. And he's not working as hard as we are. Well, we know he's not working as hard. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Too busy doing CrossFit to find herps right That's now. That's right. These down logs are a great spot for lizards. They're a great spot for uh, coral snakes and copperheads. Um, East Texas, logs are your trick. That way you can find all the salamanders too. So Dalton, let's, let's cheat a little bit. We're going to go over this way. Okay. Uh, I have my bearings. I'm just imagining 30 kids and all these rocks. Finding stuff. Finding stuff. I love getting out hurt by kids. Mostly because it saves my back the next day. That's fair.
All right. Got some good flat rocks. That's the pile we're looking for. Nope, nope can't get that one. So because we've been coming to this area for six years, I kind of know where kids find stuff. So on a day like today, we can really cherry pick kind of where we're going um, in, the, in the name of time, in the name of science, and of course, viewers at home, if anybody's still with us. So Dalton, there's this big, what we want to do is hit these rocks, then we'll walk around this U and come back up to that shelf. Sounds good. I like so, the way this pile looks. Yeah. So like Dalton was saying earlier about rattlesnakes, large piles like this, this time of year and in the fall, you really need to be careful. You really need to watch where you're setting your feet down. All right. Now we got to find something in this. This habitat is just too good. First cockroach of the day. Nice and wet underneath these rocks. Lots of smilax here in the hill country in East Texas. There's also poison ivy throughout here too. You just gotta really know where you are. Know what the hazards are. If we were out in West Texas, be mindful of the cactus. Mm -hmm. And the mesquite. And the mesquite. Everyone's favorite tree. Outside of the juniper, of course. I like, I like mesquite. I think it gets a bad rap. I love mesquite on my barbecue. I think everybody does. Oh, man. Dang. Oh, nothing. That one. So this spot looks really good. Sometimes the herp gods do not spile upon you. We've got, got a lot of acorns underneath these rocks. So we know we've got snake food here. Do snakes eat acorns, Jared? No, snakes eat the things that eat the acorns, Dalton. So you're gonna find Paramiscus, maybe a ground squirrel, something nice and big for a big old Texas rat snake. Thanks right. for clarifying that. Well, you're right, Dalton. That's why we make a good team. Snakes also do not eat dewberries. It's a common myth. I do. Well, I also eat dewberries. Nothing. Kind of surprised. Yeah, I am too. This spot's normally normally pretty good. Yeah. It's okay, because we've already found a lot of stuff today. That's right. We gotta stay positive. Don't get down. See you pick through that. Alright, we don't want to destroy the habitat here. We got everything that's that's easy to get. So we're just gonna move on. Got a lot of down tree limbs from Snowpocalypse a few weeks ago. I'm gonna try to do this safe. So here we have another, another real nice pile. Now these rocks here, I have feeling good vibes. Some of these I wish we could lift like those. Nice, big, and flat. Yeah, a couple more rows, right? That's all I need. I'll spend a few more, few more years in the gym before I can get that one. On some of the rocks, we've had uh, kids team up. We uh, one of my favorite memories of Herp Day is a group of our summer camp girls that knew each other real well. 
One tried to lift the rock, couldn't get it. So the other one grabbed her waist, and then one more grabbed the other waist. And they actually were able to pull the rock up. I have a fantastic photo of that. Miss you guys. Miss all of our summer campers. All right, here we go. We got some flat rocks. Dalton, again, feel free to find stuff. I mean, I feel like I'm having all the fun, or some of your luck is rubbing off on me right now. I think that's probably it. Spiders. All right, okay. Feeling it, feeling good about this one. Feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Yes, fine. Some leaf litter, we're good. All right, we got a couple other candidates. Gotta get through the ilex. This looks like a good rock. Move that one out of the way. Now I'm gonna put my foot at the base of this one so that it doesn't go tumbling downhill. And so you can see all those acorn shells. So rodents have been using this. All that stuff half eaten. And had a nice entrance into the burrow. Uh, this one back. What do you think, Dalton? Keep pushing down that way or move up this way? Um, I think let's go this way. All I right. got these right here. Okay. Onward and upward. So again, there's a creek that's right below us. So hopefully we find a garter snake, coral snake. So there's a lizard. Oh, he just dropped down. So another little brown skink right on top of this rock here. So Dalton, if you get on this side of the rock, I'll lift it that way. Okay. So that's both a good and bad sign to so see snakes and lizards out on top basking. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Sure so another little brown skink out thermoregulating. There we go. Snap a picture for the eye nets. So you see how common these lizards are. Yeah. And that's a favorite food of those Pachino snakes. You can also see where this one has broken off and is regrowing out. Whoops. Well, he's gone now. So, so I, I haven't gotten those. Okay. <clears throat> We're just gonna keep our eyes open. Roly polies. So we already had a, a real good, successful morning, and one of the things I always like to tell people is every snake we see, who knows how many snakes we're not seeing, how many snakes are still underground, they haven't emerged yet. So this is why we like to do this in March, um, and we, I'll do this again in the fall, just to kind of check in, see what our populations are doing. Uh, you want to pick another cool day if you can, the weather's actually helping us right now, even though it's starting to warm up. Okay, we have our first blind snake. Surprised it took this long. I am also. So this is probably the most common snake or common species for herp day. This is a thread snake, a blind snake. So you see those two little eye dots? Those are a silly, those are light sensing organs. Those aren't actual eyes. A lot of times these snakes get confused with worms Sometimes they are called worm snakes, but we do have two species of actual common name worm snakes, 
one of which does occur in Texas, North Texas Plains. Um, but all the scales are the same around this snake. So the ventral or the belly scales are the same as the dorsal scales or back scales, which is a, a key diagnostic characteristic for um, this family, Lep, Lep to five. Let Let the tie flop. flop a day. Yeah. So Renna, and this species is going to be Dulcis. There we go. Click. All right. So I'm going to set him right down underneath here. Oh, one of the things I should point out about these snakes, if you start finding these in your house, you've got a termite problem. They eat uh, termite eggs and ant eggs. Um, they do this thing called mandibular raking. So their jaw articulates like this, right? And they rake, they rake in those eggs as they eat. Super, super common in your garden. Um, flipping rocks, you find a lot of them, despite the fact we've only found one today. I've noticed that I often tend to find them under rocks that have, you know, termites or ants, since that is their food source. Not much to fly. <laughs> All right. Well, one snake in this area is better than none. One of the really nice things about going outside and, and doing this too is it really gives you an excuse to explore new territories. So the Bamberger Ranch is 5,500 acres. So it's really large, that's almost nine square miles. And I'm only one person. Um, and going out and seeing different parts of the ranch and kind of getting a sense of the, our, our grassland diversity, right? So we have uh, 50 plus years of grassland savanna habitat restoration. So what does that mean? So in an area like this, when the juniper was cleared out, I wish that we had biologists you know, out here 50 years ago trying to quantify this data. How much of this stuff moved back in after we created this typical, you know, 200 years ago um, landscape that we try to manage for today? We have a question. <gasps> a question! From Susan Downey. All right. Where are the tools you use to find a venomous snake? Don't you carry them with you? That's very good, Susan. So they are actually um, not that far away. And uh, if we found something venomous, we just wouldn't mess with it because we don't have the tools. So I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, when you do live events like this, you're, I get so amped up to just keep going, going, going that sometimes I forget the tools to trade. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to keep track of that stuff when you're just worried about the kids' safety. You know, I try not to worry about my safety too much. Just enough to keep the wife happy. So good question, Susan. What do you think? Huh? Any turtles down there? Any mud turtles? I don't see any. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Whenever you find one of these little watering holes in the hill country, well, one of the things you always want to look for is this small turtle called a yellow mud turtle. And, uh, these yellow mud turtles will find these little pools like this. This is going to be seasonal. Um, this rock ledge that we're standing on now is, would become a creek bed during a normal rain flow. We're extremely low. Even with that um, little over an inch we got last week, we're still very, very low. And that's not enough to get this rolling. So it's overcast today. Maybe we'll get rained out this afternoon. I mean, we'll still be out herping in it. Probably won't be, you know, using our expensive camera gear out in this, but. Always be herping, folks. If you haven't picked that up from us yet, 
no matter what we're doing, we're always looking down and we're always looking for critters. I can't think of a better day than a day spent outside flipping rocks. What do you think about that, Dalton? Well, you gonna try to get some of that stuff or should we just move up into that adobe slope? Let's, let's move to that adobe slope. Okay. That's, that's where I wanna be. So this is again where we get into the, we have the ability to cherry pick, you know, so we'll have that brief discussion and we'll get up there and when, when you see what this hillside looks like, mm, I'm getting excited. Me too. First, what we're gonna do is walk straight ahead because I see some rocks over there. They're getting me excited. Right. <clears throat> oh, I can't wait. All right, first things first. First things first. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody. Roly poly. How'd that song go, Dalton? Roly poly, daddy's little fatty, eating corn and taters. I have no idea what you're talking about. You got another bark scorpion. A little centroides there. Super common. Again, that's why you want to flip the rocks properly and know where they are. That stinger means business. If we were in Eddie. if we were in Arizona, you know, there's a rule of thumb in the scorpion world. The bigger the scorpion, the less you have to worry about it. The small ones that are going to kill you. All right. I've been stung by centroides before, though. They're not too, too bad. Doesn't feel good. It's like a bee sting. Yeah. Oh, here's a grub. That we call this lizard food. Ew. Look at that. Well, it's probably going to turn into a phylophagus or a June, June beetle. Okay. Rub a dub dub. That's uh, we call this backcountry caviar. Do it. No, not today. <laughs> I'm still fasting. Okay. Be able to get this. There we go. Man, nothing. Well, if you don't flip the rock, you don't know what's underneath the rock. Look at that guy. All right, Dalton, you hold that up. Hold on. It'll be easier to get this one. Yeah. Another rock. Man, look at this. Hole. Nope. Mm. Nope. That's, a, that's in there. Yeah. All right. Lay that down gently. Now, which, oh, mine's got a shift. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Good deal. Well, okay. This is herping, folks. I would actually say we're having a pretty good day. Not too bad. Uh, the patch nose was a species that I wanted to see today. So that's already a win for me. Yeah, and that the ringneck snake the is- The ringneck too. That's always great to see. Not that it's not exciting to see the other stuff. Oh yeah. But sometimes you gotta, you know, you got what we call target species that you really wanna see. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Dalton and I were talking um, yesterday evening about what species you would want it to see and Pachinose was one he wanted to see and this area brings us to one of the species I want to see. Same. And same thing with Dalton. What we're looking for here called collared lizards or mountain boomers. Okay. These collared lizards are a large, you know, they can be 18 to 20 inches um, to, including tail length, right? And they'll sit on top of these rocks they're large carnivorous lizards. They'll sit on top of these rocks in their established ranges and then just hunt. So that, those little brown skinks that we were finding, they will eat those. They'll eat baby collared lizards if they can. They'll eat snakes and a lot of grasshoppers. Okay, it's a really cool, uh, really, really cool species. And they're really fast. So maybe you'll get to see Dalton and I running around like a bunch of idiots as we try to find one. Probably. That's another beauty about going out early in the morning is you find these animals while they are still cold and their body is still cool so they're not as amped up and they're not going to be as fast
one of the things that really makes me happy about what we're finding today too is uh, we're not finding anything dead. So when snowpocalypse hit, I know there's areas in Houston and South Texas where you're flipping rocks and you're finding dead lizards. So we haven't found any dead snakes or dead lizards. So that's a really good sign that they didn't emerge yet. Or they were smart and they went back down in their burrows. Yeah. Man, so many rocks. Every rock you flip has potential, and every rock you don't flip, you're missing stuff. All right, checking that edge. One arm row for a whole lot of nothing. It's a great workout too. People pay top dollar for this kind of stuff. You also have to watch because that lizard, those lizards, those collar lizards might be out on top already. And if they see you, they will take off. They have a large home range. If you don't see it first, a lot of times they can get away from you or you won't see where they ran. Mm -hmm. Or you may just not see them at all. That's also true. I like what we're seeing underneath these rocks. There's moisture. That's a good sign. Yeah. We're seeing a couple runs. So a run is, you know, think of like a, a track, but under, underneath the rock. So it could be from insects, it could be from snakes, but it means there's activity underneath that rock. So it's a good sign. It's such a good job at flipping these rocks. I even forgot I flipped them. So if we were gonna write today up after we get through it, one of the things we'd have to talk about is the, uh, the number of hours put into this. You know, like, like Dalton and I touched upon earlier today, this is normally 25 people picking through this habitat. It's a lot more eyes, that's a lot more hands doing the work. So we're doing the best we can but another beauty of having kids, they get so amped up for this stuff, they just seem to find more stuff. Plus, they don't have bad backs and bad knees. Not that I'm complaining too much. Seeing a ton of indentations for where there could be lizards. You know, collar lizards will have five or six go-tos in an area like this. Rocks to where if they feel threatened, they can just you know run. So they'll protect this whole mound, this whole area. Our uh, mayonnaise-loving friend Wade Ryberg um, studied these lizards for quite a quite a while. Maybe we should have had him out here. Uh, I don't know. Wade, you find much stuff when you herb? <laughs> I think you're kind of like Dalton. What? Come on now. What's well, one of the best parts about herping with your pals? Being mean to them. Get, yeah, of course. Look, when you find... Well, or herping mind. without your pals, too. Yeah. 
then you get to find stuff and show them pictures and be like, look what I found. You should have come out. One of our very, very good friends, Connor Patch Adams, is uh, invited us out to go um, alligator snapping turtle trapping in the Davy Crockett this weekend. But we had this to do. So hopefully we get a chance to do that with him again too. The uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife is um, putting a lot of money and effort into trying to see what's going on with those uh, gator snapper turtles. It's a species that has a, a misunderstood natural history in a lot of ways. And thank God Texas has banned, oh, thank God there's no wasps in those nests. Mm. Uh, but commercial turtle collecting is now banned. One of the things I should talk about while we're filling time before I flip that collar lizard um, is the fact that Dalton and I are both fully permitted to do this in Texas. You just need a reptile and amphibian stamp. You don't need to have a hunting license. You can just buy the $10 stamp. And because we are on private land, not public land, we are allowed to do this. A lot of landowners will let you go out and flip rocks if you give them the data, if you tell them what you see. I could be doing a bird count right now. A lot of people care more about birds because they're crazy. Um, but I, you know, I could tell the, the landowner what exactly we're finding. Especially with it being almost migration, or I guess it is during it is migration. migration. It's just not peak migration. Right. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. You know what that is, Dalton? A bird. That is a bird, very good. That is a black and white warbler. Sounds like a peep peep bird. I like the bigger stuff, they're easier to know what they are. That's actually not true though. <laughs> but today's herp day. That's true. It's true. We have found some herps today. We have. That's good. Yeah. All right. We're coming up on an hour and a half of herping, basically. Look at all these rocks. It's almost time to start cherry picking rocks. If I was a collared lizard, I'd want to be in these rocks. I know. This might be the first year we don't find a collared lizard in this area. So some of this, so you see how the soil is different here and this is called a caliche. So it might be too moist. This dries out real quick. Here we go. Money rock. Come on. Give me something. Man, scorpions. If I was collecting scorpions, I'd be a rich person right now. So I'm just gonna check that dry riverbed with visually, see what we got going on down there. Quick with the beer, check please. A little, little vireo action. I'm so bored by Dalton not finding stuff. Gonna what was start the last naming thing bird found? calls. Another scorpion. Nope. The nest of rodent nest. No rodents. Lack of narrow mouth toes also makes me nervous. Nope. But 
this is making for great live television. I can't think of anything more enjoyable than watching two guys find nothing. Yeah. So we'll hit this top shelf and then we'll kind of kind of go down that the other side there and make our way back to the starting point. I wanted to spend about two hours in this landscape. We're on pace to do that. But again, when you look at this hillside, look at how many rocks there are. If we had 25 kids running around, A, I wouldn't be breathing hard because I'm out of shape, but B, they could do the work for us. We could flip more rocks in a shorter amount of time. Another tarantula. Tarantula? Oh, it's something. Yeah. We got over no here. toads, though. But that's okay. Cool little spiders. Jared, do you know what species of tarantula y'all have out here? It should be a Texas, Texas brown, brown tarantula. Is it in the hole? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Herpin and derpin. All right. So I'm definitely just cherry picking now. Gotta find a new species. New species. How many species are we at now, Dalton? We've got... I think we're at five. A little brown skink. The narrow mouth toad. Ground skink. Ground snake. Or, uh, yeah. Patch nose. And diadophus. The... And ring blind neck. snake. Six. Six species. Six species. Okay, we've got three more spots. If we keep that up, it would be a good day. You know, the hill country doesn't have the... Um, the sexy species of herps that South Texas has or West Texas has. And it doesn't have the amphibian diversity of East Texas. But it's got so much stuff here. So if you're just learning how to herp or you're just getting into it, you know, the, the hill country is great because it's this intergrade of all these different habitats. Uh, we are not too far away from San Antonio. Bear County actually has the most species of herps in the state. So out of the 254, or 257 counties. 254. 254, not to fact check us. Uh, but yeah, Bear County has a, uh, is it 103? I don't know. I'll yeah. defer to you it's on It's a that lot, thing. it's a lot. Um, and th that would make sense when you look at the map and all the river drainages that go through there. And then historically, you know, again, pre expansion post-civil war i mean you had jaguars and ocelots up in that area so it was really this kind of oasis same thing with uh south texas but the ranch has 23 different species of snakes that we found out here we have 16 um, different lizards we've got nine different turtles i don't know what was underneath there you gotta watch for skunks when you do this and you see a big hole like that. Huh. Um, we've got 12 species of um, amphibian. Some of those species we haven't seen in a while, like uh, the western slimy salamander. The 2011-2012 drought really, uh, really hit those things hard in the hill country and I have not found one since. And I've got hundreds of hours into looking. 
Man, if we were out for scorpions, Dalton. Oh yeah. Some uh, termites with some alates. Nothing eating them though? Nope, that's what we're after. So again, I'm just gonna give the wood a quick scan, looking for species like green anoles, looking for tree lizards, spiny lizards. Sometimes you'll see uh, Texas rat snakes in the trees. Kind of semi-arboreal, I guess. Yeah. Now this time of year, they're really arboreal. The birds moving back through, nesting. Oh, yeah. What they're trying to eat. Man, there's a lot of rocks here. I've seen coach whips also climb trees for bird nests. That's Easy another meal. species that we hope to see today. Are those coach whips or a central Texas whip snake. Both related. Now I'm pretty sure I heard a gray tree frog doing its weird croak thing. Yeah. But I need to confirm that before we can count it on the list. Right. So not everything that we find during Herp Day makes it on the iNaturalist. Um, but that's kept on the official list. More scorpions. Alright, so we're going to start making our way down the hill. Where we started is right over there. I see the table with, a, with all of our venomous snake tools on it. But that's okay, because obviously we didn't find any venomous snakes. Not yet. Well, Still have hope. That's like you're saying. You know, if we do find a venomous reptile, we're not going to mess with it. The biggest thing is if you flip a rock and you do find one, you know, like we were saying, like we're, you know, moving the small non-venomous snakes. We're grabbing them, setting the rock down, and then putting them so that they can go back under the rock themselves. And obviously you can't do that with a venomous reptile. Um, in a pinch, you can use a stick just to kind of coax them out, but you still want to be really careful. Or it's okay to leave that rock turned upside down in the name of safety. Right. In, an, in a situation like we're in now, um, I would just come back later and that snake would move and I would um, turn that back, turn that rock back where it belongs. Um, you know, because it really is about safety to the animal and safety to you. And you don't want to harass the stuff too much. Right. I am just blown away with how good this stuff looks underneath here. No collared lizards yet. Man, there's just so much stuff here. I know. We're only We only have four hands and 19 fingers. Wait, what? I was waiting to see if you caught that one. Rain lilies coming up. Oh yeah, bet they'll bloom in a couple days. It is nice to hear the birds out again. Oh, bag the moth. Worm. Or, yeah, bagworm moth, uh, yeah. right? Well, one thing, at least we look regal walking away. Sure do, I think. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to go down. There's one more spot that we're going to hit um, fairly hard. It's right next to the creek. There should be a little pool of water underneath there. We might be able to see some tadpoles. Um, nice. There's a, a couple species of frog that have already had their eggs. And the tadpoles are starting to metamorph. Those are called Strecker's chorus frogs. Um, we also have the spotted chorus frog out here. They're just a little harder to find. And they're, they seem to be, I don't know, kind of on a weird cycle too when we find them. 
It's not every year. Hmm. It's every three or four. That's and that might just be part of uh, surveying. That might be survey bias. So there's a lot of different sampling techniques for this stuff. It all kind of depends on what you're going for and what you want to see. Uh, we got a couple more rocks here. All right, Dalton, tell me something good, right? Tell me something good. We gonna find something here? Are you feeling good? Hmm? I'm feeling great. Mm. You know what they say, a bad day in the field is better than a day in the office. You are not lying there, sir. It's like you always tell me, it's like, got to get that vitamin in. That's right. Vitamin H is your most important vitamin to yourself. Get outside, soak up the sun. Enjoy the fresh air. In our case, listen to the birds, cross your, cross your fingers and toes for some more herps. Man, oh. ah, it just keeps so hard to walk away from rocks. This is what I live for. You know, my, uh, my father normally, uh, takes part in this, but because of the pandemic, we're unable to have him out. No, no um, but my brothers and I, when we grew up, we would spend all day flipping rocks or looking for snakes on talus slopes. So this is, this is in my DNA, so to speak. And, and that's really the beauty of Herp Day is getting the kids involved and trying to inspire the next generation of field biologists. Um, providing opportunity for those kids at a place like this, you know, when they see college students, they get to interact with college professors and research scientists. And here's another little brown skink. I don't know if you saw it flitter around, but you see how quickly they disappear. Oh, there he is. Right up there. Careers in science. You can actually be a professional herpetologist. You can do this for a living. And like I will Dalton's, say, you do it because you love it. It's the truth. When you do something you love, most of the time it never feels like work. You feel like you're working, Jared? Nope. There you go. Feels like I'm having fun with my pal. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Doing science? Does this look like science? I mean, sort of. We've been documenting. Yeah. I guess that makes it science. We're keeping our data. Sean Graham would be happy with us. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Probably tell us to find some more stuff. Yeah. And I tell him to go write another book about Civil War battlefields. Yeah, he just published that, didn't he? Yes, he did. I didn't even know he was writing that one. Uh, this one's got to have something, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. So you see how that's layered, right? Right. So maybe there's something underneath the, the next side. No. Man. No. Yep. I don't know what all these lizards are doing under these, you know, they're not under these good lizard rocks. No. It's a, it's a conundrum. One of the things we always, you're not going to get that big one? I'll get it. Okay. All right. One of the things we always talk about is how about. the, how the animals don't read the field guides. Right, not you know, where they're supposed to be. This is like typical, like amazing habitat. This stuff should be littered with ground snakes and flat-headed snakes and collared lizards. Right. But, but they can't read. Man, believe it or not. Well, here's a narrow mouth toad. Well, that's good. Yeah. Another herp of derp. Yep. Oh, I wasn't fast enough with my phone. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right. All right, so he's under that corner now. So he's right back underneath here so I could safely, yeah, 
he's out of the way, I can safely drop this. And then just kind of gently coax that back in. The next rain, all this will pack back in. And he'll have his microhabitat reestablished and live a nice narrow mouth toad life, whatever that's like. Oh, another little brown skink. Oh! One of the things with those little skinks, you, I'm not terribly worried about always catching them. I just, I hate if I would knock off a tail. I'd rather let the lizard go than risk knocking off a tail. It takes a lot of energy to build those, those reserves up, and then it takes a lot of energy to regrow that tail. Another narrow mouth toad. Can't say I'm surprised as we're getting closer to the creek line. Probably more moisture. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one up. I know my hands. Uh oh, where do you go right there? I'm trying not to squish him. We have is a was a county record that came from the videos together. We got some footage of some of the other areas. You know, we apologize for some of the skipping that we had earlier. We were trying our very best to do this live from the areas that we would normally have herp day. And we can't pick and choose where cell phone towers go and where cell phone towers like give you service. Right. So while we have service right here in our backyard, uh, one of the reasons we chose this location as home base for our virtual uh, picnic extravaganza uh, that happened That's in right. last July. That's right. And it's going to happen again this July. We'll have a lot more uh, new events and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the upcoming uh, weeks. But I, I want to address some of the um, comments that we got. So we're using some new technology today. This is stuff that uh, literally came in the mail yesterday. And we were able to fire it up and it worked about as well as we could have expected. Uh, but we couldn't see all of the comments. Uh, we don't exactly know why yet. We, right. There was I, some weird thing where we were only able to see two, and then yeah. after that it was none. So, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, at, at this, at the point of we're making this video now at you know 1.45 on Saturday afternoon, uh, it's already up to, what did I say, almost, almost 500 views. 400 and something, yeah. It was yeah. High, high 400s. Yeah, so... That's awesome. Uh, we only knew of three people that were tuning in right. today. Uh, so we, we apologize for our dumb, you know, brother, brother, pal banter that we had. Uh, but when you're herping out in the field and you're herping out live, we flipped a lot of rocks today. A lot. A lot. And, uh, you know, hands our hands. got a little roughed up. Hands, you know, are feeling it. And that's good. That's yeah. okay. Uh, we were only able to find six species. So that's, oh, it's seven. We, we did get a seven. That's right, yeah, that's seven right. species. I have to correct my notes here. Um, and you'll see this in the, in the video. We're going to try to like stitch together the highlights and, and make a nice produced segment where the times that we're flipping rocks and finding stuff and we have good audio because it was recorded on this little device where it won't be skipping like, you, like the live version was right. and like what we hope. Is now we hope we have good service. Right, so it's I hope not I'm not skipping. like super choppy right now. Yeah. But, but um, to address some of the questions that we saw on Facebook afterwards, the habitats that we went to today, all of the rocks that we flipped were not placed there, uh, and unfortunately, the first segment um, that we call Stonehenge, the the first layer of rocks, we actually had some rocks disappear. So uh, we, we've had some patios go in uh, because of different projects happening. And unfortunately, uh, there was some miscommunication onto what we need to leave for habitat and what we don't. You saw how beautiful, big, and flat those rocks were. That means they make fantastic stonework, great patios, great fireplaces. And so uh, our, our uh, land steward, um, Francisco, does a fantastic job with the rock work and I, I can't fault him. He just didn't know that we had a long-term study going on there. But we were still able to find critters there, yeah, which was Yeah, and it great. was only a handful of rocks, so, you know, there's yeah. still plenty of rocks there. That's exactly right. So we don't place those rocks out there. And when we're looking at habitat to go flip, we don't necessarily pick anything out. What we try to do is we go, there's a lot of rocks here. So yeah. let's go flip these. Yeah, 
as much as I'd like to say there's like a, you know, a science to it, it's, it's kind of, you know, and you get a search image for it, right? You know, so you have a rock that, you know, after you've been doing this for a while, you're like, oh, that looks like a good rock. And there's just kind of a, like, the gist of it, you know, yeah. a, a je, ne je ne sais quoi, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know. You just kind of know what to look for, and it's hard to describe what it is. But, I mean, typically a lot of times when you're flipping stuff, especially the rocks out here, it's like, it's most of them. If you can flip it, yeah. you're going to flip it. Right. And so, you know, but you go to places where there's like an outcrop where there is a lot of rocks, like you're saying. So, Yeah, and when you're targeting specific species, like the blacktail rattlesnake that we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I know exactly what their habitat is in Central Texas. It's a little bit different than it would be in West Texas or the, um, you know, the Erie and Schleicher County area. Um, what we're looking for here would be a riparian corridor. So that's like a, 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 an area where the water, when we get those heavy rainfall events, has kind of carved out the landscape with large stone outcroppings. And they're going to come out because they're semi-arboreal um, and they're really weird about their... their uh, activity periods in central Texas, mm -hmm. you know, so areas that have large sunlight spots on top of those rocks so they can bask. And then, you know, it's just making sure you find that cut. It's just right. So while we find them on the ranch, they're not common. You know, the diamondback rattlesnakes, they're a dime a dozen. Um, they're all over the place. You saw all the rocks we were flipping today. We always knew that that was potential. No matter where we were today, it was potential to right. find a diamondback. Where we were today, there was no potential to find a blacktail rattlesnake. Not really. Yeah, and and we and we kind of had that. Uh, like when Dalton mentions that search pattern, that search image, you develop it for not only the landscape, but for the critters you're trying to find mm -hmm. too, for different species to species. So that's that's really important to keep in mind. And so you notice that we didn't have the. The venomous tools, um, you know, our tongs and hooks with us the whole entire time. It's because, truth be told, we didn't expect to find anything. Um, the venomous snake that I had the highest hopes for would be a coral snake. And they're so small that, you know, we just keep our distance. We hope to get some footage of it, but we didn't even flip one, so it's not right. that big a deal. Um, but, you know, we were never in any danger because we flip rocks properly. Right. We kept with protocol. The same thing we talked to you earlier about, keeping your fingers on the outside edges, not getting underneath, you know, flipping towards you, you know, uh, letting that rock act as that shield. So even if we had found something, um, you know, we would have been safe and it would have been fine. So it's not that big a deal. Um, we ended up today with seven species, 25 individuals. And I do want to say, uh, if you haven't seen our Instagram story or our Facebook story, the highlight of the day, oh, yeah, for sure. I think for both of us, yes. was a baby yeah. crotophytus or collared lizard. That was really exciting. Oh, yeah. it was so cool. I mean, we found it a, we found a, uh, would you classify that one we found as a sub-adult? Sub-adult, probably a sub-adult, yeah. you know, so it wasn't fully this, grown. This would probably be its first breeding year for the first one we found, which yeah. was super exciting. Yeah, we were Don't pretty get me wrong. about that. Yeah, we were, uh, but finding that baby was awesome. Oh, yeah. No, that was, yeah. I couldn't have asked for better uh, for that, honestly, you know. And like you had, you mentioned to me earlier, you were like, if that was the only thing we found today, I would have been okay. Yeah. like, fair enough. So. Yeah, 100%, you know, and. You know, whenever you're, you're going out and you're flipping rocks, this is, you're weather dependent. And with uh, snowpocalypse and with the rain that we had last week, a little mm -hmm. over an inch um, across the ranch, you never know what you're going to get. So we, we plan this weekend every year as the weekend after spring turkey season. And this year, because of that weird snowfall event we got, we don't know how that affected the animals that we love to find. Right. We think everything hasn't emerged yet. That's kind of like what we're going right. to go we're, with, right? We're kind of talking about that. Maybe they, you know, it could have kind of set them back a little bit on their, their annual cycle. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it, a, it's a hard question to answer. But we were really um, excited to, to not find dead bodies. <laughs> right. We didn't find any 
yeah, anything we, dead. Yeah, we, which we've is good. we've had stories um, from people in Houston. Uh, our brother John Williams has found a lot of uh, unfortunate, you know, snowvid uh, casualties. casualties. Yeah, and and Sherry Lim, our good friend from Texas Military Institute, one of the school groups that we would normally have out here, uh, she commented that her students have found um, some some bodies. So. I was glad to not see that. Um, doesn't mean they've emerged, doesn't mean they survived, just means we didn't find it, right? Right. So we can't infer too much from that data, but it's still data. And, you know, uh, I, just every day outside in the field is a fantastic day, and I really look forward to flipping more rocks. And uh, one of the things that today has showed me is that next weekend, um, I gotta flip more rocks. Yeah. Weekend after that, I got to flip more rocks. Well, you got plenty of rocks out here. And we have plenty of rocks out here, so. you know. And we know we can cherry pick. You see the hills behind us? You see all those rocks out there? Uh, we've had different groups out, University of Texas, Texas A&M University, Trinity University, where we flipped all these rocks and found some great stuff. Six species is definitely, or seven, you're right. Seven species. Seven. I saw, I saw the glare. I saw the glare. Okay. The uh, seven species is not what we would normally find. We're eight short. All the bodies of water that we would casually observe as we were driving by them, there were no turtles out. So even though it's probably 80 degrees right now and overcast, you would think those things would be out. They just weren't. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, maybe it's just because there's not, the sun hasn't really been peek, peeking out like almost at all today. So I, I don't know. Even then, there's some turtles that'll bask if it's just like a relatively warm ambient temperature, you know, yeah. so I don't know. And those are the turtles we have out here, you know, right. your sliders and your cooters, mm -hmm. uh, your soft shells pretty much need full sun, but. Right, but we didn't even see them poke their heads out at the surface, so yeah. that was kind of weird. Yeah, just a, a weird day. So while it really is unfortunate we weren't able to have kids out today, it's also maybe kind of a good thing. This, this could have soured some people. A little bit. And, uh, you know, one of the things Dalton and I talked about when we weren't on camera was a, a day out flipping rocks with your pals is still better than a day in the office. Yep. You know, this is what we would be doing even if we weren't on, you know, camera right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like uh, our we miss our pals, Toby and Wade and, and Connor, um, you know, a lot. Because uh, this is what we'd be doing this time of year all throughout Texas, not oh, yeah. just in the Hill Country. And that's one of the um, things that I want every, everybody to take away from this as well. No matter where you are, whether you're in Texas, whether you're in North Carolina, Florida, Arizona, Northern California, you have a herping season. And just go out and herp. You know what we always like to say? Always be herping. Always be herping. It's a lifestyle, right? This is how we like to do things. No matter what we're doing, no matter if this was January 1st, you know what we'd be doing? Maybe. Herping. We'd still be herping. Well, yeah. If we were out walking around, you know what we'd be doing? Oh, you always, you always got to keep your eye open, you know? That's it. So remember that ringneck snake, you know? I was observant, and I saw that thing crossing. That's right. That not just be about. Yeah, not just because I'm a better herpetologist than Dalton, but because I had my eyes open, right? So anytime you walk outside, have your eyes open. Because there's lizards that I'm not seeing on these trees. And there's snakes that are out crawling about right now. You know, and it's just being, being present in the moment. Birders like to look up. I like to look down. Right? I can hear the birds, even with my terrible hearing. I can still hear them. Doesn't mean I know what they are, but I can hear them. Right? <laughs> it's a bird. It's a bird. Yeah, so we know that much. Well, it sounds like a cardinal, yeah. but... So, we are going to... We're gonna do a little toast here. Oh, yeah. Take a little big swig. Cheers to that. Cheers, pal. And we are, uh, we're gonna sign off and, and thank all of you for tuning in today. And um, you know, whenever we post the produced video of this, I'll let everybody know. So you can see that baby collar lizard in full effect, uh, which was fantastic. And, yeah, that was a real treat. Yeah, and hopefully we can do a little bit more herping this afternoon because yeah. it's only 2 o'clock. There's a lot of daylight left, oh, right? Yeah. 
and our wives are even going to let us go herping because that's what today is all about, isn't it? Apparently. Yeah. Always be herping. Thank you all.